This is the Hoka Speed Goat 5. And this year, it merges two important shoes in the Hoka Trail lineup. The Speed Goat and the Evo Speed Goat. The result is a double distilled ultra trail experience that is lighter with more traction. It's time to lace up these trail shoes and take them for a run. miles and over 1,400 feet of gain over the course of 90 minutes running laps in New Wine Park here in New Vienna, Iowa. Even though it is technically spring now, it did snow the night before and with the melting snow and the general thaw going on in the ground, everything was a bit damp and a little bit muddy, making these great conditions to test out the new Hoka Speed Goat 5. Now, before I give my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. Hoka sent me these shoes for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Speed Goat 5. First, let's go over some specs on this shoe. This shoe is a 33 millimeter stack height shoe with a four millimeter drop, same heel drop as last year. And this year we've got 29 millimeters of compression molded EVA in the midsole. This compression molded EVA is nice and springy with a pleasant amount of stack height. And there is a rocker in the forefoot to help keep it from feeling a little bit too blocky. And instead that rocker keeps things moving nice and smoothly through the entire gait cycle. Moving to the outsole, we've got Vibram Mega Grip to help aid with all that traction. And each of the lugs is five millimeters with special traction lug configuration. When you look at it really close, you could see all the little nooks and crannies that are there to create extra surface area for the shoe to be able to grip, giving each single lug that much more traction capability. Moving to the upper, there's a double layer of the jacquard mesh, which ends up being really nice and soft on foot, but very durable because of the way they put this together. And quite possibly, my favorite feature of this shoe, other than the grippy lugs on the outsole, is this part in the center here and between the two sides of the shoe. It's kind of like this stretchy expansion panel, kind of like an elastic waistband on a pair of pants at Thanksgiving dinner. And what that allows this shoe to do is expand depending on whether your foot's swelling from long miles out there on the trails. I just love how just extra comfortable this makes this shoe feel while still maintaining a very snug and comfortable fit. In the forefoot, there is a little bit of an extra TPU guard here, but there is no rock plate in this shoe at all. Moving to the tongue, it is a very small tongue, very reminiscent of the Hoka Rincon. And on the Bondi X, I absolutely love this kind of tongue because it just gets out of the way and stays out of the way for me. Very thin, doesn't add to any sort of heat. Moving to the heel cup, there is a little bit of structure in the heel cup and there is a moderate amount of padding back here in the parts that are gonna sit on top of the heel to kind of help keep everything seated nicely. And then the shoe ends in a little bit of an Achilles flare, which kind of helps you get the shoe on and off quickly. Altogether, this shoe comes at a lighter weight than last year's Hoka Speed Goat 4. This year, the Hoka Speed Goat 5 comes in at a stated weight of 10.3 ounces. So with those specs out of the way, let's talk about what it was like to run in the shoe. Now I will say that I'm relatively new to the Speed Goat line. I have not run in the Evo Speed Goat before and I have very limited experience in this Speed Goat 4. That being said, I do feel like there are some substantial differences between the Speed Goat 4 and the Speed Goat 5. And for the most part, I like the changes that are in the Speed Goat 5. The compression molded EVA felt nice and springy to me. It actually reminded me quite a bit of the sponginess and the response in itself in the compression molded EVA of the Rocket X. 
I also feel like because of the way that the upper stretches here, which is very different from the way that the upper behaves on the Speed Goat 4, the shoe was just so much more comfortable to run in, especially for a longer period of time. I felt like my foot had plenty of room in here, not only width wise, but also height. And I don't think it's necessarily just because they put this stretchy insert in the middle of this shoe. I think also they must have changed a little bit in terms of the volume that they're giving to your foot here in the toe box. I feel like it's just much more comfortable of a shoe. And in essence, it changed the shoe for me in the Speed Goat 4. It felt a little bit more of like a racing shoe. It felt a little bit more aggressive, but the tightness of the toe box and the fact that it didn't have that stretchy expansion panel in the top of the foot uh, makes that shoe less suitable in my mind for a longer day out on the trails. The Hoka Speed Goat 5 kind of resolves all those issues at the expense of that kind of like racer snug fit. I don't feel like I'm quite as locked down into the shoe. But I feel like things are a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more comfortable. The rocker feels a little bit less prominent to me as well. And I felt like these are all changes that made a lot of sense for a shoe that is not meant for a trail half marathon, but it's meant for those trail ultra marathons or those days where you just wanna be out there on the trails all day long and not have to worry about bringing a second pair of shoes because your feet might swell later in the day. As far as the grip and traction go on this shoe, I really enjoyed the traction lugs of this Vibram Mega Grip outsole. I felt very confident even on this slippery, muddy terrain going through some turns and the rollers and the hills and the downhills that I had available to me here in Eastern Iowa. Uh, at the end of the run, it did look like I have a significant amount of mud caked onto from the midsole back all the way into the heel of the shoe. But at no point when I was running in the shoe did it feel like I was losing any sort of grip. I always felt very confident in my footing. So those are my thoughts so far after just this first run in the Hoka Speed Goat 5. Hit the subscribe button so you can see as I start putting more runs and more miles into the shoe and start comparing it against some of the other trail shoes that are out there on the market. If you have any other questions about the Speed Goat 5, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?